a KQED television production. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna. Great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Available at nearby stores. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers available at walmartlabs.com. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport, now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has over 250 types of natural stone choices in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, community volunteer Judy Goldman grew up in rural Maine, far, far away from the international flavors that now tickle her tongue. Nothing holds her back in her quest to broaden her taste repertoire. Doorman Robert Banks is known as Big Rob, the ambassador of Knob Hill, a native San Franciscan who knows the city like the back of his hand. He's ready with dining recommendations anytime. But first, improv consultant Dave Collins is a stand-up guy who loves beer and the alpine cooking at a casual neighborhood watering hole in San Francisco called Gasthaus Leopolds. If you want to experience a piece of Austria, you step right into Leopolds, have a brew of beer and the party starts. My name is Klaus, uh, I'm the proprietor of uh, Leopold's on Oak Street in beautiful San Francisco. I'm running Leopold's with my brother Albert. We named it after our grandfather Leopold. In the old days he was a wine merchant, a burgermeister, he was a vivid hunter. I think he had a lot of fun also and we just want to continue the fun lifestyle. The food here is exactly authentic, the schnitzel is a staple. Every Sunday you have your schnitzel and your beer. During the week you eat a goulash and a beer. So what you see here, this is what Austrians eat. We have typical Austrian, German beers, and, and we are very proud to have our home beer, the Stiegel from Austria, which I grew up in, and I kind of have to admit I got drunk a couple of times on Stiegel beer when I was younger. We have lagers, we have pilsners, we have dark beers. In every town there is that guest house, the staple of the community. You come in hungry, thirsty, we give you food, we give you beer, you leave happy. I need people, schnitzel and beer. <laughs> That's the secret to happiness. All right, Dave, Guest House is, is sort of a tavern with a bar, right? It's a guest house. It's an incredibly welcoming place. Whenever you show up there, Klaus greets you. Uh, and then you get seated at a booth and you look around and it's this beautiful alpine decorated Austrian guest house. And from there, it's just a flurry of dishes and drinks and beers and wines. And it's always a delight. Leopold has a whole selection of draft beers that they bring in from Austria. So if you're ready for it, which... Robert, I know oh, you are. Oh, Robert, you, <laughs> you can get a two-liter boot of draft beer. And with a meal, it's a lot, but the beer is delicious, and I, I would recommend it. All right, now there is a protocol to drinking the boot, isn't there? Yes, there is. They tell you that when you get towards the end, you got to turn it. And this way it flows easy. If you don't turn it right, you're going to have a face full of beer. So once I learned how to master that boot, I got to the end, you should have seen me. I flipped that baby, and I mean, it just flowed right down. 
On to the next. <laughs> on to the next. <laughs> now that you perfected it, you had to do it again. I had to do it again. And when I walked up, I had two pairs of shoes. <laughs> I couldn't see. It looked like it was four, but I tell you, those boots are bad. They are like made for walking. Hey, there you go. I like that. <laughs> And they ring the bell too. Yep. Bling, 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 so bling. So everyone knows who got the boot. So oh, everyone yeah. turns and looks. So oh, yeah. Know you did, I you got the trigger. boot, but good. <laughs> well, the boot experience for me is if I'm going to eat a full meal, I can't handle a two liter boot. So I usually get a one liter, but if I'm going there with friends, one boot is plenty to, let's say, pregame the night right. to begin the evening. <laughs> two That's liters a lot. of beer is a lot of beer. You know, by the end of when you're done, you definitely need to call for a ride. Hey, man, I look, look, uh, I was trying to dial Uber, but I think I dialed Uber. <laughs> but uh, somebody came and got me. I don't know who. I really appreciated the beer menu a little bit more than the food menu. And I thought there was a great selection of choices. And I'm a big fan of Wiener Schnitzel. And when it came to our table, it was beautiful, very crispy, very light, um, but a little disappointing in that it was under-seasoned. I just felt overall like the dishes that we ordered could have used just a little bit more seasoning. Like I had a great anticipation for them and they were very hearty. The portions are really generous, um, but a little bit on the bland side. Yeah, I think with a lot of the seasoning in the, in the dishes, you have to make your own bites. So mm -hmm. for example, I had the charcut garni platter for my entree, which is a selection of pork ribs, yeah. delicious, savory, along with um, a roasted smoked pork loin. Mm. And that comes with a side of sauerkraut and also butter caraway potatoes and a little bit of mustard house made and the thing is you kind of have to compose your own because the balance comes from the sauerkraut and the sides yeah. Yeah. we had ordered a potato pancake and it came with a horseradish sour cream sauce that was on top and that was delicious it was a wonderful combination yeah i had the flatbread which was awesome i mean everything about this place was really cool i, I never had any German food before, so it was a great experience. And mm -hmm. the flatbread is one thing that w one of the secrets, you know, as long as we don't tell anyone beyond this table, right. is okay, everybody, shh. go for brunch because okay. the lines are often a lot shorter, and also you can get the flatbread, but they change up some of the entrees. They'll okay. add an egg, but okay. so all the old favorites like the Wiener Schnitzel right. um, and the you know the Charcut Garni are all available too, right. Right. minus right. the lines. Yeah. yeah, I was really excited to try the dumplings because I hadn't had them before, and it's a lot like you know you can imagine like a matzo ball soup. Um, um, they're one of the, the two brothers. It's their mother's recipe. So they always used to eat it on Sundays, as they told me. Um, and it's basically, it's a rich chicken broth with lots of diced carrots and celery. And in it is a basically a football-shaped dumpling. It's semolina. S semolina, I think. So yeah, it has exactly. Kind of a very fluffy, but um, it's light and chewy, quality. airy. All right, what about the short ribs, Judy? My husband tried the short ribs. Um, again, we we really love that type of dish. Yeah. It was tender. It was rich. Um, a nice uh, meaty sauce. It it lacked salt and uh, it, it was a little bit more chewy I guess than we had expected it to be. My dish also had like a little cucumber um, dill salad which was very light and refreshing so I agree there's lots of accompaniments that kind of together put the dish. You have to construct your Exciting. bite. According <laughs> yes to you do. Day. It yeah. takes some thought which the boot might be counterproductive to. <laughs> well yeah the boot makes it feel like you're getting the bite right more often than not. Right. <laughs> and what about the salumi platter? Yeah, so when I go with friends, I always like to start by sharing that. And it's a variety of smoked and cured meats. Um, there's a really delicious duck pate that's rich and fatty, and you can spread it nice and easily on the bread. Yeah. Of course, it comes with the mustard, which adds that brightness. We had the beef goulash, and um, that was a nice smoky taste, um, a very tender texture. Again, I, I could have used more in terms of like a, a zesty seasoning, um, but it was a really, really hearty portion and uh, definitely a well-made dish. So. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I just had a good time at this place. I bet you created yeah. the good time. Well, I, I brought I brought a little noise to the table, <laughs> but uh, all in all, I mean, the strudel was great. Fresh apples and everything was baked to perfection. Yeah. Man, those Germans <laughs> not a part. And I thought it was curious that the female wait staff were dressed up and they had great costumes and great uniforms. But right. but our male uh, waiter, he had a flannel shirt and jeans on. So he needed later. <laughs> so I think he needed to get into the spirit. And he needed well. later hose. Exactly. Yeah, but they're very attentive, very friendly, really knowledgeable about the menu, really enthusiastic and welcoming. All right, this is your spot, Dave. Wrap it up for us. Uh, Leopold's is a fun neighborhood restaurant to bring friends and family to kick off the weekend. All right, and Judy? Uh, hearty portions, uh, great German beer and wine selection. Um, could use a little bit more seasoning in their dishes. And Robert? Like I said, wonderful.
<laughs> that's, the, that's the word that I learned. Leopold's is a great restaurant, and uh, I would visit it again. All right, if you would like to try Gasthaus Leopold's, it's on Polk Street at Union in San Francisco. Telephone number is 415-474-2000. It's open every night for dinner with brunch on the weekends. Reservations are not accepted, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. Elegant, modern Vietnamese cuisine is the highlight at Judy's Place, where artful creations please both the eye and the palate. In Palo Alto, it's called Tamarine Restaurant and Gallery. Tamarine to me is the contemporary Vietnamese cuisine. Vietnamese food with a twist. The food's very important that it tastes good, but it has to please the eyes. If your eyes love it, your mouth will love it too. My name is Tammy Nguyen. I'm the executive chef and co-owner of Tamarine Restaurant and Gallery. The name Tamarine came from my name, Tammy, and Marine, because in Vietnam, we live near the sea. My background actually is in medicines. I'm a pharmacist and I worked for 10 years before I changed. So instead of mixing drugs, I'm mixing food and ingredients and I love it. I learned how to cook from my mom. She has a restaurant in downtown San Jose. And on the weekends, during pharmacy school, I would come home and uh, help her in the kitchen. Well, my mom sometimes said that my food is not Vietnamese because of the different presentations, different ingredients, but the soul of the dish is still there. So the restaurant also functions as the gallery. We select all the well-known artists from Vietnam, bring the paintings to Tamarine. Every six months, we would have an auction, and the money raised go to the local charities here in the Palo Alto Bay Area. Everybody really have a good time here, and we treat our guests as if they are coming to our house. All right, Judy, this is a place that really appeals to all the senses, doesn't it? It is uh, such a special place. We always bring people there that are, have come in from out of town. Right. Not only is the atmosphere warm and inviting and colorful and vibrant, but the cuisine is just it's tantalizing. <laughs> we like to start out with the tamarind um, banh mi roti. It's a very flaky but moist and tender flatbread that you rip up into pieces and then there's this panang curry dipping sauce that has the flavors of ginger, garlic, coriander, cumin, and cream. So I actually started out with the banh mi roti also and the flavor actually reminded me of movie theater popcorn in the best possible <laughs> way. It was comforting and the creamy curry sauce was great. The one thing I will say is it needed heat. Mm. A lot of the dishes throughout the meal lacked that punch that I was expecting. We weren't really provided that that fire I was looking for. I had the uh, black cod in a clay pot. Oh, yeah. mm. Is that what it was? Yeah. And, and that was awesome. Yeah. And uh, I had to tell them, bring me some heat. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and did they bring yeah. you some heat? Man, they brought it. was so good. I thought I saw the devil sweat. <laughs> oh, you got to <laughs> ask for it then. Man, when they brought <laughs> the heat, go. man, yeah. I mean, man, they, they, they brought the heat. So all you have to do is ask. But the place was beautiful. I mean, I drove down there and I looked in the place and it was like, wow, this is really going to be cool. <laughs> We typically order the uh, shaking beef entree. It's not a necessarily a spicy dish, but one that combines the soy, garlic, the wok seared tenderloin beef, which is just amazingly buttery. That's to me kind of the essence of the restaurant. Yeah. It just brings together this party on your plate. I loved that dish. That to me was by far the best thing we had there. And then the salad, the greens underneath it, were dressed in a way that complemented the yes. beef really well. Yeah. The, the raw onion, the greens had that rice vinegar taste. And to me, that was the complexity that I really appreciated, right. especially at the price point. I felt like I wasn't getting with some of the other dishes. I had the uh, papaya salad and that was really good. You know what I mean, everything was fresh. I mean, the vegetables, the papaya, and the dressing, I mean, it was really good. Now, what about service? It's the kind of service where they're not at your table all the time, but it's almost like they're watching from a distance discreetly, and they're just sort of at your elbow when you need something. I had the exact um, same experience. I thought the service was impeccable. <laughs> I, I was blown away by our server. Um, he was quick, he was prompt, but he also ha clearly had this passion for the food yeah. and the wine. And I just have to say, this wine list is like wine porn, okay? I'm <laughs> 
mean, this one is is stupendous. I mean, they're not inexpensive. They're certainly you pay the price for them, but there are some glorious, glorious selections of wine. Service-wise, it was a little lacking because the server. I don't know what was up with this dude. He was kind of, you know, kind of rushing us like, oh. you know, do I want this? Do I want that? Oh. Do I want? And that's the only thing that I kind of felt that was off. Cause you know, I like to, you know, I like to get into my food. I like to get into it and, you know, hey, get no, down right. with yeah, it. And, and this dude, he was like sweating me like, mm -hmm. you know, but otherwise than that, it was a beautiful place. I had a great experience. I had this, uh, what is it, Empress Rice yeah. mm -hmm. with the egg thing mm -hmm. on it. And that was something different. And you know me, bring the heat. Bring the heat, baby. Bring the heat, baby. Making so the they, sweat. Look, look, look. So I'm putting the heat on the rice and I'm doing the egg thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the glass noodles? I really enjoy the glass noodles because I've never had glass noodles that had that rich umami flavor in the noodles. It's always been around the noodles in a sauce exactly. around it. But the noodles themselves were cooked perfectly and none of them stuck together, which is another thing I noticed, like excellent technique and uh, heaping portions of crab alongside it. Mm. And to me, that was alongside the beef, uh, one of the highlights of the meal. I was just impressed. Right. It's hard for me to go off of my favorite choices, but we really wanted to try a variety to give the menu justice. and. Uh, the duck did not disappoint. It's a coriander seared skin. Very, very tender here. Melt in your mouth kind of quality. And the coriander spice was definitely present. It was there. It was a nice seasoning. And it was tender and silky and it was just a, a beautiful combination. And what about desserts? Anybody have room for dessert? Always. Did anyone try the chocolate I lava? I had the molten lava cake. Molten That's lava. the one. Yeah, oh, I had the yeah. molten lava cake. <laughs> the lava. We, uh, we ordered some dessert wine, mm -hmm. um, which paired really nicely, like a semi-sweet. It was great. great. And the molten lava cake was good. It was exactly what a molten lava cake should be. It was gooey, rich, chocolatey from the inside. All right, your restaurant, Judy, wrap it up. Oh, tantalizing taste combinations, really thoughtful service, um, and a warm, elegant atmosphere that makes me want to return again and again. All right, and Robert? Well, if I'm down that way, I would, I would go back. I mean, oh. I would go back. Uh, Service-wise, if they could just back off a little bit and just let me be me, but I would go back. <laughs> All right, and Dave? Uh, High-end Vietnamese serving super high quality ingredients with impeccable service. All right, if you would like to try Tamarine Restaurant and Gallery, it's on University Avenue at Tasso Street in Palo Alto. The telephone number is 650-325-8500. It's open for lunch on weekdays and every night for dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. When you've had too much of this, you've probably not been downing enough of this. And that equals a hangover headache. Now, dehydration is the culprit, so do what we wine pros do. Drink as much water as wine. Remember, dilution is the solution. Cheers. The cable car rumbles past Robert's Pick, a cozy and friendly gem located on Knob Hill, where seasonal ingredients create nigiri, sushi, and sashimi that shine. In San Francisco, it's called Sushi Rapture. Sushi Rapture is one of the unique spots, the hidden gems of San Francisco. The location of this corner, it's the hub of everything. Everyone knows each other. It's a happy place where automatically when you sit down, it's one of those places that you have a friend. My name is Pedro Dungo. I am the co-owner of Sushi Rapture here in San Francisco. When you go to traditional Japanese restaurants, they'll have the traditional California roll, spicy tuna, but what sets us apart are the signature dishes of what's in season. It's not also just the fish, but it's also the pairing of what we're gonna put inside it. So our sushi chef, Sam, his history is more than about 25 years of making Japanese cuisine sushi here in San Francisco. When I look at Sam creating a dish, it's his hand movements. It's how the knife is slicing the actual fish, how it's prepared, what he makes with orange and the white and the green. It's so colorful. What's great about Sam is the trust and bond that you're gonna get. He'll remember everything about you from the first time you've been here, from five years later to now. He knows what you're gonna have and everything else, what your taste buds are gonna be that day. This is the place for a first for everyone. The first sushi, the first uni, the first tuna tartare, and it won't be your last. 
All right, Robert, I'm beginning to think of you as Mr. San Francisco. You know everything in the city. Now, how did you find this one spot? I work uh, right around the corner. Uh, from this restaurant, and I stumbled upon this place, and I went in there, you wouldn't think of me as being a sushi guy. I do. But when I walked in this place, and the way they treat you, and Sam's back there making the sushi, and then they got these ribs. Man, I got into it, and I mean, I, I love it. It was great. I order like the spicy tuna rolls, mm -hmm. uh, I order the eel, it's like Sam's back there, he's doing his magic, and if you want to, as far as his heat, he'll throw a little yeah. bit of that ghost pepper on there for you, <laughs> and really shake you up. And you won't know what hit you. <laughs> Man, bip bam, thank you ma'am. <laughs> I was a little skeptical because I came about 50 miles and okay. I, you know, you can get sushi all around, but right. I thought, we'll see if this is a really good sushi place. And we feel like we hit the jackpot because we arrived on a Tuesday night. It was happy hour. Right, right. And not only that, on Tuesday night, they have $1 oysters. There you go. We Wasn't had such cool? a good time. Cool. We started out with like $2 sake and $1 beers oh, and yeah. hand rolls, which right. are also part of the happy hour. Right. All I can say is that every corner of the menu had something that was just so fresh and appealing that it just kind of opened me up to just exploring further. So I had sashimi, which I usually never get. It's arrayed so beautifully like a flower with a little cool. herb bouquet in the middle. I tried it just to say I tried it, but then I was like, I want more, and yeah. it went on and on. It was a huge portion of, I believe, seven different types of fish. Right. Um, my favorite was the butterfish, which, you know, mm -hmm. tasted very buttery. It had some small fish eggs on them, mm -hmm. some roe on them, and it was a lot of sashimi. And, you know, for $35, I felt like I was getting good value. We also were there for happy hour, which is a great time to be at Sushi Rapture. Yeah. We got two-for-one hot sakis, and we also yeah. got the dollar oysters, which were very fresh. They were sweet. The oysters were delicious. Yeah. And we started actually with the beef tataki, which I really enjoyed. And it was seared perfectly on the outside, a generous portion. And it came in this ponzu sauce that was provided that perfect amount of kind of acidity, acidity, and, acidity and, brightness. And, and brightness to the very rare beef. And it was delicious. Well, after I eat a big thing of sushi, then I got to have my ribs. Of course. And these ribs, up they're just great. Everything is so fresh and it's right off the grill. They give you this rice and they give you salad. And then, of course, once you hit the sake a couple of times, yeah. you know, sake to me, you know, as I call it. And I mean, everything is just good. It's I just like, want to go out to eat with Robert. <laughs> yeah. I just go want to go. go. I, 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 you are yeah. my type. I'm good. telling you. We go good. drinking and eating. Hey, man, Those ribs were so... I was actually... I got FOMO from not ordering the ribs. The couple next to us had them, and I was talking about them with mm. my date. And then all of a sudden, they're like, hey, do you want to just try some of our ribs? Did the not. couple they just did. gave us one of their ribs, and uh. it was delicious. And we started talking about what we ordered, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's that kind of restaurant where right. you just start right. having yeah. a conversation right. with a couple right. next right. to you, and everyone there is friends. I had the same experience, that it was just this favorite neighborhood place. The hostess looked at us and said, hey, you're not from around here. Welcome. But treated everyone, you know, warmly. Mm -hmm. And what else did you have, Judy? Well, we had the seaweed salad, which was a little appetizer, and it was really fresh, crunchy, and zesty. It had a nice dressing on it and a sprinkle of sesame seeds, so just great textures. We had the gyoza, which I never miss on a Japanese menu. There's both pork and there's a shrimp vegetable chicken combination, and the Inside is really soft, but the outside was like perfectly crispy and crunchy and beautifully done. We also had the cherry blossom roll, which is just a wonderful combination of, you know, the tuna, the, there's avocado in there, there was um, salmon, and then I just had to go on, like <laughs> I couldn't stop eating, and had the hand rolls, which were like a spicy tuna and a salmon skin, and wrapped up in this crunchy seaweed roll that was, it was, it was divine. Yeah. The one thing I will say, the one miss for me in the meal was the walu maki roll, which to me, it just had too much on it. There right. was, it was a plate where there was a sweet sauce presented beautifully, but on the roll, there was eel, there was walu, there was mayo, yeah. there was sriracha, there was fried right. feeling. It was just too much. Mm -hmm. It could have used, you know, 50% right. less stuff happening yeah. there, but that some people enjoy and that. A lot of people like that, you know, where they load it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just load it up. Sometimes I feel like a bull in a china shop, <laughs> you know, but uh, they just make me feel so good. I can sit back get my sushi groove, you know, get my sake on, and then flip the TV to the game, mm -hmm. and everything is all right with You're the home. world. Well, it's your spot. Wrap it up for us. Well, if you just want a nice little place on Knob Hill, a little secret spot where they're doing the sushi, go to Sushi Rapture.
All right, and Judy? Warm, welcoming, uh, friendly, super fresh, high quality sushi, a wonderful neighborhood spot. I would go back. Okay, and Dave? A local neighborhood sushi restaurant with a great vibe, fresh sashimi, and good place for eavesdropping. <laughs> if you would like to try Sushi Rapture, it's on Leavenworth at Washington Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-359-1388. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. I have to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show, Dave Collins and his boisterous neighborhood spot with bootfuls of beer and Wiener Schnitzel at Gasthaus Leopold in San Francisco, and Judy Goldman, whose contemporary Vietnamese eatery pleases all the senses at Tamarine Restaurant and Gallery in Palo Alto, and Robert Banks, who waxes euphoric and poetic and everything over the extensive menu and attentive service at Sushi Rapture in San Francisco. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the terrific wines we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. And I'll see you guys again, I hope. Cheers! 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 Cheers. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has over 250 natural stone choices and over 10,000 stone slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Natural mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, open source engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers at walmartlabs.com. Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna, great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Online at safecatch.com.